Am I unmuted? Casey, I can't hear you if you're talking to everyone. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> How many times have we done this? Um. So, welcome to the meeting. Uh, we it happens to me all the time. <laughs> okay. We had a whole conversation over here on this side. I was like, wait, what's happening? Is it me? But I can't see the screen because um, I'm missing. Okay. I'm sorry, lady. Here is our agenda. Um, we're a small but mighty group tonight. Um, is there anyone who needs Spanish translation? Let us know now because this move meeting is going to fly if we don't. I'm going to do the abbreviation. Well, let me say it in Spanish. Um, okay. Bienvenidos a todos. Uh, ya iniciamos la grabación. It's okay, then my voice high. Um, iniciamos la grabación. Um, déjenos saber si necesita la traducción en español. Got you. Okay, that was a C, so that was a yes. <laughs> On this side of the pond. Got it. Okay. I'll do it quickly. Uh, la agenda de hoy está aquí disponible. Bienvenida, informe del presidente, informe del tesorero, uh, equipo liderazgo escolar, uh, noticias nuevas, y vamos a completar la, la reunión. All right, ready to go to the next one? Okay. Um, so the January minutes, uh, they should have been emailed out earlier today. Um, I don't think that message has gone out as of the last time I checked my inbox, but the meetings are, the um, video recording of last month's meeting is on our YouTube channel. So if you want to check that out, um, it's been posted for a couple of days now. Um, and then I'm sure the minutes will go out tomorrow and I guess we can informally approve them at um, our March meeting. Para acceder los minutos de la reunión de la, del mes pasado, puede visitar la página de YouTube y también lo van a enviar por el correo electrónico. Um, any questions uh, you may have for the administration, please put them in the chat so that they can be addressed at the end of the meeting. If you have questions specifically pertaining to your child, please reach out to the administration directly there. Um, oops. Uh, email is below. Si tiene alguna pregunta, uh, inquietud, uh, por favor, dirija sus preguntas a la administración de la escuela, la principal. Uh, aquí tenemos la información o póngalo en el chat para nosotros capturar su pregunta y poder uh, responder si es algo que se puede responder en esta reunión. Oh, sorry. Uh, I will move this for... I think I'm yeah. Is there anything in there in my text book that you can add to the Um, I really saw the time that you wrote to the summer on the time. Okay. Um, so it's. Okay. Um, yeah, it's probably Okay, so then we're moving on. And then um, the president's report. Petrina, I know you're um, tuning in from afar. Are you ready? Are you still with us? Give me five minutes. I'll circle back All right, we'll me. Come back to me. Okay, we'll come back. Okay, thanks. Uh, so that brings us to the treasurer's report and um we have a special treat mary louise foss is in here in person <laughs> finally made it in person hello <laughs> okay um so this is going to be very exciting uh so just sharing the whole screen yeah um yeah let me just close this down i'll just do this that works yeah okay okay there we go um i can't tell what i look like right now but um, <laughs> okay so we have our um fundraiser reports which we had 
three fundraisers that we did uh, before in, in 2022. It's now 2023. And we actually finished one in 2023. Um, so I just wanted to show everyone that the reports for that were submitted. Hello. Um, and the first one was a membership dues fundraiser. We asked everyone to uh, donate at least five dollars um, more if you could uh, and what we raised from that was one thousand nine hundred forty one dollars um, we did have incur some paypal fees which was thirty three twenty five and um, the total profit was one thousand nine hundred seven dollars and seventy five cents so that was great um here I, you know it's I know it's small but um there is a breakdown of what the expenses um, have been allocated for. So initially we said we would use $1,000 just for supplies for events and things like that. Um, we've used it on craft night supplies. The, we're gonna have a game night still, so it'll be used for game night supplies. Our dance night that's coming up next Thursday. Hope you all can join. We'll we'll hear more about that later. Um, and then our meeting snacks. Um, and then the remaining funds we had left over that were that were more than what we expected. Um, Nine hundred seven dollars and seventy five cents have been allocated to school spirit supplies and fun decor to make our school beautiful and exciting. Um, and then we're going to allocate $537.75 to teacher wish lists. And we have another $70 that currently we have not allocated for anything. So we'll have to figure out how to spend that money. Um, okay, the next one. What? Oh, sorry. In Espanol. Okay. Come, um, come, come sit down. No, I'm going to be here. I can see myself. I see what is happening here. Okay. Um, para el reporte del tesorero, actualmente le presentamos, bueno, le vamos a presentar tres reportes hoy. El primero le muestra la primera actividad que, que planeamos para recaudar fondos, que fue los, um, I don't know how to say fees, el, los cinco dólares que se le pidió a cada padre de como parte de la membresía. Este año uh, recaudamos $1,941 dólares uh, porque lo recolectamos de dos formas. Podía mandar el dinero en efectivo o lo podía mandar por vía de PayPal. Uh, sí, tuvimos que pagar $33 dólares con 25 centavos por vía de PayPal y nos quedó $1,907 dólares con 75 centavos. Aquí debajo es un poco difícil de ver, pero tengamos los detalles de cómo vamos a utilizar el dinero. Uh, eh, Really hard to see the numbers, but uh, mm -hmm. inicialmente uh, pusimos que queríamos recaudar mil dólares, pero como te, uh, recaudamos más, la cantidad restante pusimos 400 para una noche de, de arte o de crafts, como para hacer una actividad, uh, una noche de juego, game night, uh, 300 para el día de baile, las decoraciones y los, las bebidas. Uh, I think it's 300. Is that last number 300? I can't see. Where? The bottom one. Uh, 200. Y 200 para los, las meriendas y las aguas y las cosas que utilizamos para las personas que vienen a la reunión aquí en persona. Uh, queda, una, queda 907 dólares de restante. Uh, 300 se, se votamos hace como dos o tres reuniones para el equipo de decoración de la escuela. Uh, 537 para la teacher wish list y queda 70 dólares que todavía no se ha designado para algo. I'll do a shorter version next time. I'm okay. like, I don't know what is going on. I can't read that. <laughs> It's a little blurry, yeah. I know. Um, okay, and then the next one we have here is the fall picture day. Um, we, our gross total income for that was $2,630. Um, that was just our 20% commission that we made on the total sales of $13,150. Uh, we did buy $150.75 in some picture day supplies like hand sanitizer and combs and things like that. Um, so our total profit was $2,479.25. Um, this money will be used for our end of year carnival. Um, which will take place on either June 3rd or rain date is June 10th. Um, Great, that one is in Espanol. Yes. Uh, segundo, segunda actividad de recaudar fondos fue el día de la foto. Uh, 
se recaudó, I'm going to use this one right here, 2,630 dólares fue el total. Sí compramos algunos um, artículos para poder uh, ayudar a los niños como peines y, y hand sanitizer. No sé cómo se hand sanitizer en español. Um, um, y el, la cantidad restante fue 2,479 y esa cantidad la vamos a utilizar para el final, el festival um, familiar al final del año que actualmente lo vamos a hacer el 3 de junio y si llueve, el 10 de junio. Sorry. Uh, okay, and then the next one is the our holiday shop that we just completed. So I did have a little bit of a, um, a mistake. I, I thought we had made $1,700, but it was really $1,081.78. I I miscalculated something. Um, but uh, so we received a 20% commission on sales. Um, the total sales were $5,681.50. Um, and then we basically had to pay back the the shop that loaned us the inventory, 4,000, or sorry. No, the inventory was 3,000. And I can't even read that. It was around 3,000. <laughs> $939.50, I think. And then we bought receipt books, which were $47.87. And then there were, you know, we came up short on a few things um, for some of the kids. So we donated $6.85 to help some of them finish their purchases. Um, so our total profit for that was $1,081.78, um, which is still pretty nice. Um, if anyone wants to look at these also, I can I can send you a copy or uh, we also have uh, um, fully executed copies here at the school. So you can do that. To this one. Okay, la última actividad fue la, la tienda festiva que tuvimos en diciembre. En esa actividad, se, el, el total que se recaudó fue $5,681. Menos los gastos que tenía que ver con el formato de la venta. Nosotros teníamos que devolver la cantidad de lo que cuesta el inventario y comprar los libros de recibo. Entonces, le retamos esa parte y lo que queda era $1,081.78 centavos. Esa cantidad la vamos a utilizar para asistir a los niños que se van a graduar en el quinto para sus actividades al final del año, como el, el viaje que tienen a, a, al final del año. O alguno, a, siempre cada año la, la asociación de padres le hace como una actividad, sea comprarle helado o algo así. Entonces esa cantidad la vamos a utilizar para a, asistir a, la, a los graduados. Si necesitan una copia, ah, sorry, no, no sorry. si necesitan una no. copia del documento, ya que se ve un poco, es un poco difícil de verla acá, Pueden, aquí hay copias disponibles para que lo vean con más detalle. It's hard to look here and here. I feel like I'm, <laughs> I'm being a bad there. speaker look here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then we have our beautiful interim um, financial report. This is a report that has to be uh, completed by January 31st. We have already filed this. Um, with Ms. Perez Hernandez, I hope, I think. <laughs> so um, we have Mary Louise. Don't okay. hope. Do not know okay. we okay. did. Okay. Um, so we're all good there. Um, and you know, I'm not going to read through all these things because that's it pretty much encompasses all the things that you just heard. But our um fund balance is currently totaled at eleven thousand three hundred and eighty-six dollars and sixty-one cents. And I have a breakdown here. Uh, our bank balance currently is $10,653.70. We have $209.15 in petty cash. We still have our $523.76 in our open collective account. Um, and we still have, unfortunately, a deficit of $1,326.95 because we still owe people graduation picture money and we have not found them. So that leaves us with the ten thousand fifty nine sixty six. Um, yeah. Do you want to yeah just show that again? 
Aquí le muestran uh, una copia en más detalle del de reporte financiero que tenemos que uh, someter uh, en enero. Ya se sometió esa, esa, ese reporte y tiene más detalle que viene siendo un detalle más específico de los lo tres reportes que le acabamos de eh, demostrar. Igual, si necesitan una copia, aquí está disponible. Uh, no le vamos a repetir todos los detalles, uh, pero como ven, tiene todo el ingreso más los gastos del otro lado. Pueden ver, entonces, la cantidad restante es 11,386,61 desde el tiempo que se inició este reporte. If you want to go and do the next one, so I can... Um, Ok, y aquí uh, con más detalle o más simple de ver, el, el saldo actual es 10,653. Uh, tenemos en efectivo 209 dólares con 15 centavos. Todavía tenemos los lo 523.76 con nuestro um, asociado Open Collective, que todavía no se ha designado cómo se va a utilizar ese dinero. Y todavía tenemos a uh, 1,326,95 centavos del día de la foto del 2020, a uh, lo que se llevaba a graduar en ese entonces, que no se pudo tomar la foto por la pandemia y tenemos que encontrarlo para devolverle su dinero. Y el saldo disponible es 10,059,66 centavos. Okay. And I just wanted to point out, like, you know, here I say our fund balance is 11,386,61 cents. Well, that is before we calculate in that money that um, we still owe in, for the graduation picture refunds. They, it's still sitting in our bank account right now. So technically, we, you know, it's in there, but um, we can't spend it. So okay. just want to point that uh, out. Anotar que la diferencia de la cantidad de 11,386 que presentamos en el reporte es lo que está actualmente en el banco, pero la cantidad en realidad es lo 10,000, whatever, what was it, 10,000? 10,059, porque no podemos contar con los 1,326 porque ese dinero hay que devolverlo. Todavía no ha pasado el plazo de, I think it's seven years. I think it's five. Para poder decir que ya el dinero se puede utilizar. Entonces, mientras tanto, vamos a seguir tratando de devolver el dinero. Ok. Ok. Um, now we're ready for the SLT report. Petrina, will Petrina be giving it? What? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's $6,000. So why, when you did the members' view report and you said this is for the people's wish list, this is for different activities, mm -hmm. why you put such little amounts for those items when you have $9,000 available so you can put... I'm stopping here. Okay. So the question is, um, she, she's asking, why aren't we basically spending more of the money that we have in our bank account uh, on things like teacher wish lists and things like that? That's the question. I, I apologize. I'm sorry, Mary Louise. It's a little what? bad. Um, can you repeat yourself? Yes. Okay. Uh, we just had a question here in person, and the question is, Why aren't we spending more of the money that's currently in our in our bank account on um, things like teacher wish lists and some of the activities we've only allocated, you know, two hundred, three hundred dollars or whatever. Um, to be honest, we haven't needed it yet um, for the teacher wish lists. We I think we'll probably go over this later. But um, we sent around a survey to ask teachers what their needs are. So we may be allocating some more of that money to cover their needs. Um, but we just wanted to identify the needs first before we raised the, you know, we had to have a reason to spend it, you know. Correct. We, we could. For the fifth grade, fifth grade activity that We could, yeah, we can always add more money. This money is just specifically earmarked for that stuff right now. But if we find that we need more, we do have some more money in our bank account and we could uh, we could do that. I mean, we don't want to spend all of our money, but, um, you know, just so, yeah, the, um, right. 
just one quick point of clarification. And also when we voted on the match for those different categories, it was at our December meeting, which was before any of the numbers for these fundraisers were final. Because if mm -hmm. you remember, those fundraisers happened mid December. So we were sort of guesstimating. We did better than we thought, which is, you know, champagne talk. It's like, mm -hmm. it's great news. Um, but in order to go back and like adjust those numbers, we would have to put that forward to everybody and be like, hey, like, here's where, where we are now. We have the money in our account. Now, how do we want to spend it? Before, it was just a guesstimate based on how we thought we would spend it. Right. Right. More than $5,000 in the bank, not counting the $1,000 in the graduation refund. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, but the thing is, is we have to establish a need. So we need to price out the things that we want to do. And then we will raise to the, con to the constituency, whether you want us to spend the money on that, you know, uh, let Katrina back in. Yep. Can I just quickly summarize? Yes. Um, so oh <laughs> summarize for in Spanish. Okay. In una pregunta. Okay. Una pregunta. Lo voy a hacer uh, más simple. Hubo una pregunta uh, relacionado con el reporte específicamente que por qué en el reporte um, en el primer en el inicio que hicimos el reporte por qué designamos una cantidad tan baja a uh, 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 específica cosa como para la teacher wish list, o sea, uh, los deseos de la maestra. Uh, what was the other one? Ok, lo, los, um, bueno, todas las actividades que estaban en ese primer reporte, que eran como 300, 200, una cantidad bajita. Entonces la pregunta fue que, ¿por qué si teníamos cierta cantidad disponible, uh, uh, designamos una cantidad tan baja? Entonces aquí en el diálogo se, se, se decidió para ciertas cosas. Primero, en diciembre se decidió esa cantidad basado en lo que se pensaba que íbamos a tener, a tener disponible. Y... Mary Louise, I, you're going to have to restate what you said because it was a lot of... Which part? <laughs> uh, the designation. Oh, well, we have... So in order to allocate... Well, first, when we, we say we're going to do a fundraiser, we have to kind of guess how much we're going to make and kind of guess at how what how much we want to put toward different things. So, you know, we always go a little lower because, you know, we don't want to like over... You know, yeah. we don't want to be under... Okay. what we guessed you know but we can always add to it later oh well, you can't say okay. too much now i'm gonna forget okay. my brain is not processing that fast <laughs> i know i'm slow okay solamente que no quería decir lo incorrecto no quería decir lo que no era entonces uh, la segunda parte de eso en términos de la conversación es que cuando nosotros recaudamos fondos siempre hacemos un estimado de lo que se, nosotros pensamos que vamos a recolectar en ese en ese en esa actividad entonces según lo que pensamos que vamos a recaudar para esa actividad vamos designando esa cantidad a otra actividad. Um, otra parte que se me olvidó en la parte anterior es uh, que siempre para todas las actividades se puede poner más dinero y, esas, y eso siempre está abierto para la conversación. De eso se trata la reunión para que nosotros le presentamos los números y luego como todas las personas que están aquí participando podemos decidir cómo se va a utilizar ese dinero. So, okay. yes, I just need to make clear? sure everybody Good. was in. Okay, there was another, Karen had a question, I think. What was the question? Was there another, was there another question? Yeah, well, like for anything. Okay, so to for anyone listening at home, I'll say the question, then you say it's finished. Yeah, okay. I just want to make sure okay. I, I understood the question. Before. Okay. Uh, so then you repeat is it. The, uh, is, the, is the question that too little was fundraised in each activity? Like there wasn't enough fundraised, there should be more? You could put What I'm trying to express is that there was something there where you could put something out. You could put the and then you have to do a commission or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Does that make sense? That's right. how it works. Okay. Yes. yes. Let me ask the question. Okay. La pregunta is um, con 
diferentes uh, eh, compañías que estamos trabajando, que si tiene sentido trabajar con compañías que nos están cobrando, por ejemplo, si ganamos cierta cantidad y nos cobran X cantidad, se encuentran alta, que si eso tiene sentido, si tenemos que trabajar con esa compañía, right? Do we have to work with those vendors? Is that the question? Yes. Part of it. Okay. Okay. I just want to. I think she said, okay. I think the question, so just for anyone listening at home, um, the question is, you know, we she's seeing where we had to pay out like $3,000 or whatever for our inventory. Um, and we only made, you know, a small percentage of what we put out. So here's how, okay, just so you understand how everything works. So if the photo day, for instance. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Or anyone listening, if, if so, for the photo day, they, you know, they have to pay their people too, you know, and so they charge, you know, for the packages and all that money goes into a bucket, and we make twenty percent of of a commission, okay, um, and then yeah, it does go back to the company. I mean, these people do run it as a business, also, so you know, but we do get to make twenty percent. And let me let me tell you all the the, the three that we did. Okay, um, well the membership dues that's self explanatory. But then the holiday shop, the way they work is they give us they give us their product on consignment. So basically they loaned it to us, and then we sent back anything we didn't sell. But anything we did sell, we made twenty percent commission off of the total sale, and they made eighty percent. So once again, and that covers their costs for you know they gave us flyers. They send uh, delivery people to to send us the product and pick it back up, you know. So it's you know it's part of their business model too. But that is how a lot of these and it's the cost of the merchandise. So to answer the question short, is the answer is always absolutely yes. There's there's no limitation to who we could work with and who we partner with. Um, that's always part of the dialogue. So absolutely, that leaves the door open for us to work with whomever, right? There's not a, there really isn't a limit or a, a rule per se with who we choose to partner with, but that's also a function of the, our ability to reach out to whoever is available, right? So um, oftentimes that's why, well, it's great that this conversation is happening because that's the goal of these meetings, right? We love the dialogue and we love that this is being brought up because that's where we rely on our parent community. If you are aware, or if you know of a company that perhaps has a better setup, then that's the chance that we get to bring them in. Mm -hmm. at, the, at the present moment, we work with whoever is reaching out to us or based on our knowledge and awareness. But absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Correct. So absolutely. The, the really the short answer of that is 100%. Our goal is always going to be if we could make 100% of whatever we're doing, why not? Because at the end, it's for our community. Right. So I think that what that what I'm hearing is that that leaves open for if we choose to do this another time as a community that we're going to bring you all in and whoever wants to come in and make it happen can make that happen. Mm -hmm. um, but that's always going to be the case with any partnership or any activity that we're doing that the goal is always going to be that we want to bring in the most because if we bring in the most then we're doing the most for our kids right yeah so um this is some of this report can it shows up and it does seem alarming particularly the holiday one because of how big the number is but it's a function of how the company operates mm -hmm. and it yeah. wasn't just that company like we actually shopped that that was a new fundraiser for us it was recommended to us oh, um, from the president's council the and um, we actually shopped it around to different vendors. And this was actually the better, like the best commission that we found was a 20% commission being that we were not sourcing any of the inventory. And then they did all the delivery. Um, they provided all the print materials. All, if your kids participated, you know that all of the things came wrapped in those cute little Mylar bags. All of that was included in the company's take of that. Do like given the amount of work that it was and like um, what we we'll made off of thought. it, like, are we going to do it again? It remains to be seen. Probably not with them, but you know, you learn a lot as soon as you get off yeah. the starting block. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is also the first time I think we did something like this, this, mm -hmm. well, at least since I've been. And here. we did actually negotiate that price. Um, they initially had a sliding scale where if you if you made, um, you know, up to five thousand dollars or something like that, then you only got fifty percent. Whereas, um, 
you know, you had to, you had to make $8,000 to get the 20, but we, we were, uh, we were tough with them. And we were like, we want the 20%, like no matter how much we sell, we want at least 20% before we do this. So we did fight for a little more than what they wanted to give. I have a question about your idea. So are, what you're saying is more of like a sort of like vendors come in and then we're just renting like space a flea market kind of vibe situation or a so street sale. Um, Got it. Right. Yeah. So this, is a different, this is like a different model where they were like our, it was more of a traditional retail shop where we were selling their inventory that we had sort of, you know, told them what we were looking for. So it's a little bit different model, but I like the idea of the pop-up shop because you're right. That does leave a lot more in our pocket. So it's definitely something to consider for next Where we rent space, essentially. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and we're always open to any any ideas you have for fundraising. Um, and like, you know, we want to support the community. It's more just like, you know, having the bandwidth, having the space. You know, there's a lot of factors that also go into, you know, when we do these fundraisers. Like, And so, it also goes back to that, like, you know, gonna do a Spanish. Like, we also need boots on the ground. So, like, if you have an interest and, like, then we need your connections. We need you or your time. We need you to be willing and, like, you be everybody within your earshot. Yeah, yeah. I just missed it. Yeah. Yeah. No, totally. Mm -hmm. But, um, like, it's just, like, the legwork that gets exhausting to sort of start something like that up from scratch. But we're, we're game. Like, it just needs a lot of technology right here. Yes, we absolutely do. But it's more of the getting the vendors, finding the vendors, because we've reached out in years past for different sort of events. And they're, um, let me just you know, they sometimes so. like a lukewarm response. So, okay. Everybody pause. Le voy a hacer un resumen más simple, pero para que todos sepan, porque aquí en persona estamos hablando mucho y tenemos mucho discurso relacionado con la conversación de uh, cómo nos asociamos con diferentes, um, what, what is the word? Uh, no word. Vendor. It's going to come to me when I'm translating. I forget all my words, but it's okay. Mm -hmm. ¿Cómo hacemos nuestras asociaciones con diferentes compañías como para recaudar fondos? Entonces, como le expliqué anterior, siempre tenemos opciones de con quién no queremos asociar y, y siempre el propósito es recaudar la mayor cantidad porque el dinero es que recaudamos siempre regresa a nuestros niños y el propósito es darle buenas experiencias. Entonces, la idea que se presentó aquí en, en persona es hacer algo con los con los negocios locales, como algo como rentar el espacio y luego así tenemos más opciones de cómo vender y podemos recaudar más fondos porque no, la comisión, por ejemplo, con el ejemplo que teníamos con la, uh, la tienda festiva, uh, podemos reducirla ya que no es, uh, el trato no es de esa forma. Entonces estamos aquí hablando de cómo se puede uh, realizar eso uh, el año que viene o quizá en, en, el, en el año restante. Y también comentando de que sí tenemos esa como una opción, pero también necesitamos la ayuda y, y la, la asistencia de todo para participar, porque en realidad eso es un esfuerzo grande y se toma muchas personas y es un mayor esfuerzo. Entonces, para que no se sienta que se están perdiendo la conversación, uh, eso es lo que estamos hablando aquí, pero si vienen en persona, se hace más fácil. <laughs> Because then we're not going back and forth. But uh. I just wanted to add, though, if you do have any ideas for fundraising, we do have a fundraising committee and uh, always welcome people to join us for that. Um, I think, you know, we are going to be doing like a picture day in the spring. Um, I don't know how many more fundraisers will do, but we are going to focus our attention on um, reaching out to businesses and seeing if we can get donations for certain things. Um, you know, if we establish a need for them. So, you know, instead of having to do the fundraiser and, you know, ask for money from our parent community, we ask from bigger businesses like Home Depot, you know? So that's kind of my, um, okay. that's my, that's, that's my uh, focus for and the then, next couple of um, years. Like Tiffany, has a Tiffany has a question. Ms. Cortez, please state your question. <laughs> I was just wondering um, how, for the holiday shop, how does that work? Because I was asking Aiden about it and I mean, he bought some things and you know, it's a great idea. However, I feel like 
the items that you guys were sent were not very good because even the way it came to me, like in the box was all like disheveled. And he said, oh, that was the last one of things. And it just mm. looked like, I don't know, the quality was very bad in my opinion. So I'm just wondering like, what was I, I didn't go physically to the shop, so I don't know. But from what he bought home and from what he told me was offered there, like the quality of the items were not very good. So I'm just wondering, like, yeah, is that I mean, how every item was, or like, uh -huh. what was the story with that? Okay, so um, yeah, I mean, I I will don't disagree with you on that. Um, the you know we didn't really get to pick quite like what we were going to be sent, but they did send us an array of things. And, um, you know, we also discussed like, you know, if we were to do it again, like maybe would we do it kind of like, you know, have, have, um, parents hand make things, or maybe, you know, it, think of other options for like kind of better quality things. The only thing is, is, you know, um, they were selling things for like 50 cents a dollar, you know, and it is a fundraiser. So of course they're going to put on, uh, an additional cost to make it, you know, make it make money for us. Um, so, I mean, yes, could you have bought most of that stuff off of Amazon or, um, you know, Ollie, what is the, <laughs> one of those, the Alibaba or whatever, um, like something like that. Yes, probably. But we also saw it as like a fun experience for the kids to go shopping by themselves. You know, we weren't only thinking of it as a fundraiser. We were thinking of it as a way for the kids to be able to go feel responsible and to do a little budget management and um, independently shop without their parents being there. So, you know, that was the th one of the things that we saw that we liked about it. Um, I will, I don't disagree with you. Yeah. Like, sure. I got like a tiny little glass bear for my holiday gift, but I will cherish it always. Um, you know, I think that for, for me, it was like more about like the experience for the kids and bonus. We also made a little money off of it. Um, but I, I see your point. Um, and I think, yeah, if we were to do it again and it were up to me, I would say maybe let's find a way to get a little bit nicer items to sell. Or per se stock up our own. Or, yeah. I think that lends itself to the conversation we were having here in person about the possibility of, uh, just reconsidering how to set that up in the following years, if we yeah. consider doing it again. Um, yeah. so, uh, brevemente. La pregunta fue relacionada con la tienda festiva que estuvimos en diciembre, relacionado con la experiencia y la calidad de los de los artículos que estaban disponibles, um, que uh, acaban de compartir la, la preocupación o las inquietudes, que la calidad de los de los artículos que estaban disponibles no eran tan buenos y se sentían un poquito barato. Uh, pero la idea de este evento era uh, la experiencia para los niños, para aprender a ir de compra, a elegir un, algo, un artículo para tener la experiencia de comprar y dar un regalo a, a algún fam familiar. Uh, todos los eventos y todas las situaciones hay algo de aprendizaje en cada momento, uh, como nosotros, como su uh, junta ejecutiva, sí hablamos y dialogamos sobre eso y pensamos que Quizá en otra ocasión no lo, no lo haríamos igual, pero siempre hay una primera vez para todo y siempre hay algo que aprender, uh, como la conversación que tuvimos anterior de cómo tratar de hacerlo um, para la próxima vez. Y de nuevo vuelvo y repito, es el beneficio de nuestras reuniones para que nos den su comentario y así lo usamos para la próxima vez. So that's the benefit of having these meetings and having these kinds of dialogues so that we take it as a learning experience, what worked, what didn't work. But with that particular event, it really was about the experience for the children. Um, for those of you who were able to uh, be there in person and see what was happening, yes, they were like little trinkets, but the, the, the children had such a fun time just selecting it. Um, I personally loved my gift and it was so great to just see the excitement. Even if I never use it again, um, it was really exciting to see the faces of my children giving me something, giving grandma something, so those kinds of things. So while some of it wasn't like the sentiment wasn't lost. And so hopefully next time what we can do is create something that has that keeps the, the sentiment, but also has the profits associated with and the quality so that you have something um, that you feel was worthy of your money. Um, so. Good job. Okay. Are there any more questions? Not related? The conversation probably. What's that? Yeah, I was just going to say this conversation can probably be picked up in the fundraising committee 
but I think it would be a good idea like to combine that whole flia with the up and potentially, you know, make that something. But I know this is a tangent for another meeting and so we can move on. I just wanna put that out. Definitely, we can continue the conversation. Are there any other questions about any of the reports? I'm happy to answer any question, like get into it a little more into the nitty gritty if you want. It's there's a lot of moving parts. Um, right, but PSA. yes, you can always uh, email the PSA, PSA at ps376.com. All right, moving on, SLT report. Okay, guys, <clears throat> I'm gonna um, backtrack to the president's report and just combine everything. Awesome. I'm in the mistake of time. Can everyone hear me? Yes, we got some head nods. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, cool. Okay, thanks. Okay, so um, for the month of January, we were able to have our safety meeting. And one concern that came up was um, just the behavior of the children um, in the bathrooms. And um, I do know that there were, what is it, systems in place where the security guard will be um, monitoring it at random times so the children aren't aware of when she's coming by. But just to um, minimize the playing around in the bathrooms, um, there weren't any major incidences or concerns in terms of um, any drills or stuff like that that came, that arose um, in terms of parent concerns. Um, if you do have any concerns, do email the PSA so that I am able to bring them up at our next meeting. Um, but I, I would say that the takeaway would be the bathroom safety. And that kind of just piggybacked more so on, you know, during the, it's just something that the kids do. And so it seems like that's something that the school um, is working to um, remedy the playing around in the bathrooms. Um, moving on to what else did we have? So that was SLT. Then we had um, our president's council meeting for this month was canceled and the slides were available. Um, we have an upcoming meeting next week with the CEC. And so we do encourage um, the parents to also try to attend to show up and represent our school. Um, in terms of SLT, we went over the subcommittees um, reports um, and the results of the testing on the iReadies. In terms of SLT coming up on Monday, we will also have um, Title I will also have the floor to present um, their what their what they um, want to break down their spending on. So that's also coming up for SLT on Monday. I do not believe that there are any more major um, things that came up through the course of the month from the meetings. Um, so I think that we can leave that there if anyone has any questions or concerns. Okay. Uh, en términos del informe del presidente, uh, hubo una reunión de, de la seguridad escolar. En esa reunión se presentó uh, una inquietud relacionada con el comportamiento de los estudiantes en el baño. Uh, que juegan mucho y en realidad es un riesgo. Entonces, actualmente eh, hicieron un plan que la seguridad va a pasar uh, en diferentes momentos uh, para monitorear el comportamiento de los estudiantes y para asegurarse que no están jugando en, en, en el baño, uh, porque en realidad es un riesgo. Uh, esa fue la única inquietud que se presentó en esa reunión. Uh, no había reunión del, del consejero de los presidentes de la asociación de padres este mes. Sí hay una reunión del de CEC la semana que entra, que si por favor le piden a los padres que asistan para que puedan compartir sus ideas y sus inquietudes. Uh, en la reunión del equipo de liderazgo escolar se presentó, los, los subcomités presentaron los resultados de los exámenes de iReady, uh, de matemática y de literatura. Uh, La próxima reunión es el lunes 13 de, 13? 
13, Monday, yes, 13 de el, este lunes que viene eh, y en esa reunión uh, el uh, comité de título 1 va a presentar los resultados de su uh, recaudación de ideas. Eso es todo actualmente con el informe del presidente y del equipo de liderazgo escolar. Oh, and also just to add, that Ms. Gladys still have, Ms. Padillo still has um, reserve uh, gym uniforms that ha she did have on sale. <clears throat> um, and that they, you can um, come in to order or send in an envelope with the cash or money order for the, um, for this. I do wondering, is Ms. Is there any way to find out if she had, if she'll be sending out a form? I, I do know she just wanted to kind of get rid of what she has now. I know people were still asking um, for you. They are available, but based on what she has, sizes are based on availability right now. Um, we just got a net hot, uh, net hot, head nod, clearly I need to go. <laughs> <laughs> a head nod from Ms. Perez Hernandez that um, that's something that we can follow up on um, to try to send that out. Um, uh, el anuncio fue que uh, la señorita Ms. Badillo todavía tiene uniformes disponibles que estuvieron a la venta en la noche de Steam uh, la semana pasada. Y la pregunta fue si van a mandar un formulario para informar de lo, las tallas que están disponibles para poder tratar de vender lo, lo que queda. It's not working for me. It's been stuck. It feels like me. I'm just oh, twisting my go. words. Okay, on to new business. Um, and some of this is sort of old business with like new information. So our family dance party is finally happening. Uh, it's next Thursday, a week from tonight, uh, Thursday, February 16th, 5.30 to 7.30. It will be held in the lunchroom. Uh, last week, the students voted um, in class to determine the theme. Um, this is an actual photograph of one of the ballots. So every class got these. Um, there was four themes that were proposed, Out of This World, Decades Dance, Almost Famous, and Valentine's Day. These numbers in the little boxes are the actual totals um, that were tabulated. And the winner um, was Valentine's Day. So we've sort of like rebranded it ever so slightly to be the, um, go to the next one. I'll uh, All You Need Is Love Family Dance Party because it is two days after Valentine's Day. Um, and we've wanted to sort of like emphasize that it is an event that is about all types of love, things that you love, things you love to do, people, all those kinds of things, and not necessarily like, you know, traditional ideas of Valentine's Day. So um, a fun uh, aspect that we had sort of planned on from the beginning and why we had picked the themes that we did is we want to incorporate some sort of like fancy dress component. Um, so there will be a costume contest Although for this particular theme, it's not as costumey as it could have been for the outer space theme, um, where you know you could be a straight up alien. But um, we will be awarding prizes for most pink, most red, most dapper, fanciest. And this is one for if you have a second grade boy who refuses to wear red or pink, like I might have at home, um, you can come dressed as a biggest fan. So whatever you love the most, if it's Minecraft, you can come head to toe Minecraft and that that might do it. Like you might win a prize. Um, yeah. But you know, if it's the Jets, if it's um, Barbie, who knows? Like that all of it is um, like supposed to be an exercise in creativity and open to interpretation. So, you know, do your best. I will um, pass this back to Andre Yuna so she can catch yeah, up in just Spanish. Go to the next one because it's already in Spanish. It's, oh, okay. It's gonna help me out right there. Uh. <laughs> While you do that, uh, oh, oh. el próximo jueves 16 de febrero vamos a tener nuestro baile familiar. Los estudiantes votaron por el, uh, el tema del baile uh, y ganó Día de San Valentín, pero cambia, lo cambiamos un poquito para ya que San, San Valentín es el 14 y el baile es el 16. Uh, y como para que sea un poquito divertido, le pusimos un componente de como de vestuario a uh, 
diferente categoría, más rosado, más rojo, más estiloso, más elegante y fan más grande. Y ya eso se relaciona con um, algo que te encanta, sea si te encanta Minecraft, te gusta algún artista en particular, uh, te puede, puede venir vestido de esa forma y el propósito es para desarrollar la creatividad y para tener un momento divertido entre familia. Uh, eso es otra vez el 16 de febrero, de 5 y media a 7 y media, los invitamos a todos a participar. Los niños votaron, muchos de nosotros que somos de una edad diferente, queríamos otro tema, pero dejamos que los niños ganen y de decidan ellos mismos. <coughs> Out of this world, you know, it's really devastated. Nuestra uh, página de Pinterest is very sad. <laughs> Um, está muy triste porque ya estábamos planeando para todos los diferentes temas, pero ya ganó este y, y va a salir wow, de igual de bonito y divertido. Yeah, we'll figure this out. But you know, the kids have chosen. Um, I was going to add, you know, it's, it's a, also a time for parents to meet each other. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's really well to come and Yes. Ok, el segundo, bueno, todos los propósitos. Siempre el propósito es que nos reunimos todos en comunidad, no solamente los niños, pero también es una oportunidad para que vengan todos en persona, nos podemos conocer, me pueden ver en persona, no solamente en cámara. Hello to everybody who's here. Um, para que nos vayamos a conocer y pueden compartir, ya que duramos dos años fuera de la escuela. Entonces, por favor, vengan, come dance, vengan a bailar. Si tienen recomendación de canción o música que quieren escuchar, pero tiene que ser apropiado para los niños, por favor, déjenos saber y lo ponemos en la lista de, can de canción y música. Ok. The next one is Saturday. Um, it's this, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, also, because it is a family dance party and parents are are required to come, um, that means you should also dress up. Like it's, there's no better excuse to wear something mortifyingly embarrassing to your children um, with, you know, the sign off that like it is sanctioned by the school. Um, I fully expect only parents to be there. <laughs> Um, so this brings <laughs> us to like the getting the work done part, which I feel like I'm a broken record at all these meetings, but uh, now is the time to make stuff and do stuff and set stuff up. So we are, um, we got the go ahead to come in and make decorations on Saturday, this Saturday. Uh, if you have a kid in Saturday school, you know that that starts at 8 a.m. This is supposed to be an a.m., but um, so Andreina here, she said that she will be here. Um, she'll stay after drop off. I know that there's some other parents in the audience who may as well, maybe, hopefully. Um, but uh, we have, we could be here as late as two. Um, if you are interested, please RSVP. Uh, um, let us know if you want to come, send an email to the PSA, and then we can figure out just who to expect and like, make sure that, um, you know, you're not rolling in at 130. And we've already cleaned up all the paint and glitter. Um, also, we need volunteers to set up and um, the actual day of the dance, set up the dance, uh, run concessions and clean up. Um, uh, we will be starting at four o'clock on Thursday, February 16th. Um, like all the posters say, doors are at 530. So that gives us not a lot of time to get a lot of work done. So if you are interested and available, please let us know. Again, PSA at PS376.com. Also, in the email about the dance, there was a Google form to RSVP. Um, I hope it would be great if uh, all, you know, there's a capacity of 300 people for the uh, cafeteria. It would be amazing if we had 300 people. The RSVP is really to, um, I mean, yes, determine uh, heads expected for the dance, but also it would really help us in determining food because we would like to offer some sort of like a, you know nice sort of dinner-ish kind of concessions um if we if you can RSVP and let us know if you will be attending that would definitely help in planning uh so we can drop um that link in the chat I believe so I'll turn it over to Andre you know okay el sábado vamos a reunirnos el comité de decoraciones. Uh, yo voy a estar aquí a las 8 disponible. No tienen que llegar a las 8, pero sí tenemos que irnos antes de las 2. So entre la, vamos a decir, 8 a 12 y media. Pueden venir a tratar a, a asistir en creando las decoraciones para la fiesta. Bueno, el baile, no es una fiesta, pero nosotros le decimos fiesta del jueves 
Um, y el mismo jueves para el día del evento necesitamos ayuda para uh, arreglar el, uh, la cafetería donde el baile va a, a suceder. Uh, para las concesiones, o sea, la comida que vamos a repartir y para limpiar, vamos a estar aquí a las 4 el jueves. Déjenos saber si quiere o está interesado en participar, en ayudar como voluntario. Uh, necesitamos toda la ayuda. We need all the talents and support and volunteers that is available. Because we want to make it nice, you know? We're going to make it pretty. Yes, sorry, I keep. Oh, also, if you are planning on coming on Saturday, like if you can come, sure. if you could bring sort of largish format cardboard that you have sitting in, around your house waiting for um, the recycling collection, we're going to do kind of biggish heart uh, cutouts that we will be painting. Did you? Oh, I brought some. I was like, don't throw out the cardboard. I got it. Hopefully it comes out, you know. Okay. Uh, si tienen cajas grandes, pequeñas, por favor, si vienen el sábado o tráiganla para poder hacer alguna de las decoraciones, vamos a cortar el cartón, vamos a hacer corazones y diferentes decoraciones. All right, I'm going to be really quick. So we sent out a survey to the teachers for us to determine uh, if we would need to allocate more than the $537 that we have approved in December for teacher uh, supplies. Um, 13 teachers responded. We did send it um, kind of low for our typical um, responses. Um, I'll show you the results in a moment. Mandamos una encuesta a los maestros para saber que cuáles son las necesidades de, para, la, para los maestros. Solamente 13 maestros respondieron actualmente al, a la encuesta que mandamos y los resultados se los voy a presentar actualmente. So, of the folks who responded, we asked them to give us three items that they would like. Um, the majority of them are, uh, and also I will say full disclosure, some of this has been simplified, right? So for example, when you see markers, it's different kinds of markers, but for the sake of categorization and showing you the information, it says markers, but these are the kinds of things that were asked, um, were requested by the teachers that did submit. So markers is the majority, uh, disinfecting wipes, paper towel, crayons, tissues, cleaning supplies, all the things to keep all the germs at bay. Um, some teachers were very specific, uh, catered to what they needed for what their specific tasks are, but this was the results. So um, to answer the earlier question about the $537 that was allocated, the current response, the $537 would actually cover most of the things that were asked for. However, I do think that it might not be representative of everything that they actually need. Um, so it's debatable um, how we run with this, but we also have um, sort of a little bit of a competing effort at the moment, because I know there's the school store, uh, the, the school store thing that went out, which is very, it has a very similar, um, I guess, goal to provide supplies for the school. So. Is 13 representative of the true community? No, but this is what we have at the moment. So based on that, we'll try to do what we can with that information. If anything changes, we can always revisit the conversation. Um, esos son los re resultados de la encuesta. Tengan en mente que solamente 13 maestras participaron. La mayoría de, los, de las cosas que pidieron están relacionadas con artículos que necesitan, como wipes, uh, toallas, crayolas o crayones marcadores, cosas para limpieza y algunas maestras sí fueron específicas en pedir algo que ellos necesitan actualmente para la función de su trabajo, pero eso es lo que han pedido actualmente um, basado en lo que han pedido, los 537 que tenemos disponibles, sí cubre esa, eso, pero podemos visitar eso de nuevo en otra ocasión ya que, how many teachers are in the school? Yeah. 25. Okay, so maybe not so bad. Okay, so about half. Okay, and okay. Um, que hay más uh, personas disponibles en la escuela. ¿Alguna pregunta? No, so the way that the, the way that the survey was structured is we asked just basic question. We were interested in, uh, uh, so we asked who are you, how many people, you know, what do you teach, how many students? And there was actually um, interest-based questions like, do you buy your own supplies? What do you typically buy for yourself? So we do have additional information. So 
if we ever wanted to maybe surprise teachers at one point, you know, teacher appreciation, that's a possibility, right? Because now we have additional insights into what they may purchase for themselves or need that is not specific to this. And then we ask them to list up to three items that they would want. And then also if they have like Amazon wish list or a teacher wish list to give us the link so that we could access it. So this is actually, although 13 people responded, there's more than 13 items in here because I included all three items that every teacher who responded asked for because many of them were not like high priced items, right? A box of Lysol is not really that expensive. So maybe if they ask for like bounty Lysol and like markers, it's possible that we might be able to get all three, right? So um, it the survey did ask for more information so that it leaves room for us later to revisit and possibly purchase or buy other things that is not specifically what they asked for. So when, well, following this conversation, because we want to go through the results, we'll price everything out. And then if everybody's good with it and the money is sufficient, we could just order it. Oh, the little reading cushions so the kids could sit on the floor. Yeah, it's probably, it's a typo, yes, it's fast. That is not a real thing, it's a typo. <laughs> um, I'm like, yeah, I don't know what that is, but it's cushion. Um, yes, um, yes, that part, typo, we'll fix it. Um, la pregunta fue, ¿cuándo pensamos uh, comprar los artículos? Y bueno, si le presentamos los resultados, si alguien tiene alguna pregunta, no tiene oposición, podemos usar el dinero que tenemos para comprar lo que está uh, en la lista. So, as soon as possible, really. Because, you know, yeah. Are you guys going to buy it soon? Because I feel like the school year is already about to be over soon. I feel like that tends to happen by yeah. the time you guys actually get the responses back. Well, we have the responses. These are the responses. So, so to like, no, we're preventing it today, but yeah, tomorrow. Are you guys going to buy it, like, soon, like, this week? <laughs> well, Since school is almost over? We got a lot of days left. The 14th is 100 days, okay, people? There's 80 more days left. But, yes, the point is to present it and actually buy it now that we showed with, you know, if there wasn't any opposition to it. There's nothing really impeding us from ordering it and buying it. So, next step is purchase. It says at least one, but truthfully, most of, not all of it is probably covered. Um, part of tallying the results was going through and actually pricing out the items and it does fit within that particular budget uh, with the exception of, let me go, how do I go? There was like beanbag chairs and things like that. So those are more pricey, um, but anything that was like cleaning based or napkins and those kinds of things is like quick. Um, and then per Melissa, you had brought it up earlier depending on what was on there, the conversation today would have lent itself to like increase that amount to something more. Um, so that's where we are. So any questions? Where did I leave off on my Spanish? Okay. En términos de los próximos pasos, um, según lo que, este, lo, lo que hemos presentado de los materiales que pidieron los maestros, el próximo paso es comprar los materiales ahí porque el, el dinero que tenemos uh, asignado, en realidad, porque ellos pidieron cosas muy simples o súper simples, se pueden comprar con esa cantidad. Y uh, cuando empezamos la reunión que presentamos los reportes, sí hubo un, una conversación de si se puede aumentar la, la cantidad Y eso siempre se puede, se puede hacer dependiendo de qué es lo que piden los maestros. Uh, otra parte que no traducí anterior es el formato del, de la encuesta. El formato de la encuesta preguntaba más preguntas, no solamente qué es lo que necesitan, sino cuáles son los gastos, qué clase de cosas compran los maestros normalmente. Y eso nos da espacio para si en un futuro queremos sorprenderlo o comprar alguna otra cosa. Tenemos esa información sin tener que pedir o mandar otra encuesta para recaudar esa información. Uh, did they announce to the teachers and the last speaker to fill it out? No, I know that's how we got some of the responses last year. So it was, an email was sent out. Se mandó un correo electrónico y también un recordatorio. Did I miss one? That was a no. 
Yeah, so the other thing is I think Teacher Appreciation Day is in May. Yes, it is. Hence the format of the survey. There's always opportunity to revisit so that. And we do plan on doing the multi Yes. All right, hold on. Let me just go back. Oh, we answered that one. Okay. Uh, Tiffany, I saw you had two questions. Did we answer your question about the dance? The theme was Valentine's Day. And yes, it is on a Thursday because that Friday is the last day before break. And I also, not that I'm saying that people are saying this, but I also work in the school and on a Friday before break, everybody wants to go home or have vacation. So it's not the best thing to do on a Friday before a long break. Um, so that's an answer from me, not the school. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> um, okay. Ready for the next one? I think we're good, right? I don't know why this doesn't respond to me. Okay. Oh, this meeting is very long now. Okay. Really quickly. So in the last meeting, we talked about uh, spring picture day. Depends on who you are. Maybe good news or maybe not good news. But instead, we're doing um, just graduation pictures. Um, we are not doing a full spring picture day for this year. I know over the past two years, there has been two picture days, but most schools traditionally have one picture day. Um, and then they do a picture day for their graduating students. So this year we will revert back to that and we will only be doing pictures for kindergarten and fifth grade, capping down photos. The company that will be uh, taking those photos is Stomping Ground Photos. Um, they take really amazing pictures. We went through the same process that we did in the spring of uh, talking to different vendors and looking over their products. Um, I think many of us were semi thrilled with the company that we work with, a AM Photo. So we did not opt to go with them again in the spring. We're going to try to new a new company. This company is very organized. They have all the photos, um, and their processes are online. We are aware that that could be a limitation to many of us. So we will be setting up support to help anyone order and order and go through the process um, in the PSA office. But first things first, that will happen. Monday, April 3rd, more details to follow, so stay tuned. Un anuncio dependiendo de cómo se siente de la foto. Este año, uh, hace los dos an años anteriores, hemos uh, tenido dos días de foto, uno en el otoño y uno en, en la primavera. Este año vamos a regresar uh, como lo hacíamos originalmente y solamente vamos a tomar foto a los estudiantes graduándose, que viene siendo los de jardín de infante y los de quinto. Uh, y se van a tomar su foto con la toga y el birete. Uh, la, eso va a suceder el lunes 3 de abril. La compañía se llama Stamping Ground Photo. Todos los pedidos se hacen en línea. Después que se toman las fotos, so van a poder ver la foto. You will get to see your photos first. Make sure you love them before you order them. Uh, y estamos conscientes que uh, tener algo completamente digital en línea puede ser dificultoso o necesita asistencia. Entonces nosotros también vamos a, a proveerles asistencia para ayudarle Si necesita ayuda con su pedido de su foto cuando la tome. Any questions? Blue. Yes, that's the, the school color. I encourage you to go check out their website. You will love it. The pictures are fabulous. They're amazing. The goal, the company tries to capture the child's personality, although maybe not so much for cap and gown, but look at it. You never know if next year that might be something we might want to do. What was that? I believe right now it's individual. I don't want to speak out of place because I didn't ask. It is in their structure that they take um individual uh sorry class pictures, but I'll confirm because I don't I didn't actually double check that. Yeah. Yes, but we don't have it in our presentation because we got to iron that out first okay. before we yes. Um, you might want to mention that we also talked to them about doing fall pictures um, in the fall and we were late down the day before. Yeah. So they came highly recommended from school, neighboring schools. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I just want to see if there's any questions. I can't see. Where's the chat? There we go. Where did it go? I don't think there's anything. Okay, great. So um, full transparency, although we change every year, this company is very highly sought. They are very busy. They're already booked for the next school year, the fall of the school year. For the most part, they work with many, many, many schools. Um, so 
I do encourage everybody to go to their website and look at the quality of their photo, their type of photo, even their pricing is meant to be, it's like build your own. So it's meant to be at your own comfort. If you want all the bells and whistles, you can do that. And if it's just the basics, you can do that as well. And because they take pictures in different poses traditionally, maybe again, not so much for cap and gown, although they may, um, you can also mix and match. So you're not stuck with one pose. You have a lot of options. Um, it really is something that um, is flexible and we think fits our community really well. So uh, keep that in mind. We're happy to share the, the page of the company so you can take a look and see how you feel about it. Um, esa compañía uh, es súper popular, trabaja con muchas escuelas ya. En realidad están ya súper ocupados para el próximo año escolar, pero sí sentimos que el producto vale la pena y tiene muchas diferentes opciones um, relacionado con su precio. Puede, puede, uh, la formato de su precio no es solamente un, un paquete pre prehecho, sino te da la oportunidad de mezclar las opciones. Okay. Keep moving. Yeah. We super still quick. People online. Yes, they're still with us. Stay. We, we appreciate you staying. It is super late. Okay. Okay. Almost there. Going to be quick about this. So, um, I'm still talking to AM Photo about anybody who, you know, weren't as so happy about the photos that they received, um, waiting on their response. Um, uh, and we are planning on doing a retake day. Uh, so we just need to find a date that works for us and, uh, we'll have an update as soon as we possibly can. I'm thinking it'll probably be in March though. Okay. That's it. Okay. Para la persona que no se pudieron tomar foto en el otoño o, o estaban ausentes o cualquier razón por la cual no se pudieron tomar la foto, todavía estamos hablando con la compañía AM Photo para tratar de hacerle una repetición de las fotos, uh, ya que ahora solamente en esta temporada solamente vamos a hacer lo de quinto y kinder. Uh, estén atentos para más información siguiente. Any questions about picture day, retakes, what's happening? You're still there. They are. I see you. Yeah. Oh. That's a typo. Okay, it happens, you know, That's we're human. Um, quick, we'll, res we'll, we'll, we'll cover this again. These are the upcoming events that we have in mind for the future. Cookies and Canvas, spring, uh, not Spring Picture Day, Graduation Picture Day. That's a typo because it was from before. The intention was to have Spring Picture Day. We've now changed. Uh, there will be a family game night, Teacher Appreciation Week, some kind of garden event, and the year ends carnival. Thank you. Thank you for sticking it out with us. I know we're going super long. We're almost there. We're almost there, we promise. We say that all the time, but you know, it's just so much information that we want to give y'all. Um, un resumen de los eventos. Todavía no tienen fecha, pero pueden ver acá los, lo, los eventos aquí al final del año. Come on, work with me here. There we go. Sorry, Ms. Paris Hernandez. We always want you first. <laughs> Stay tuned, principal report. Yes, yes. Congrats, um, my principal's report that I had okay, originally no created and, you know, thought this was a little more important just based from questions that I had been fielding um, from parents. So voy a ser breve. I won't go like detail by detail. If you have a question, ask me. Uh, voy a tratar de ser lo más breve posible. No voy um, parte por parte. Si tienen alguna pregunta, me pueden parar y yo... Um, uh, parará para dar más detalles. So this week, um, some parents may have received what's called a promotion in doubt or a PID list. Esta semana, algunos padres recibieron una carta de uh, promoción en duda. Um, first thing I want to start off by saying is please do not be alarmed. That is not a decision that the child is going to be held over. It is really just an alert when we send the January notice. So lo más importante en todo esto es que no estén preocupados porque en este momento en enero es solamente una alerta y no, no una decisión que el niño va a, a tener que repasar el año. 
um, just some basic information about promotion and doubt. Schools are mandated by law to inform parents if in grades three through five, and I'm sure six on up to high school, I uh, just never have worked in one of those settings, uh, the child is not meeting grade level expectation for promotion. What does that mean? If the child is not a level three at that point in the year, then they're not meeting grade level expectation because that's what is considered to be at grade level or meeting benchmark. So even students who are making great gains, showing quality work products, but are just missing because maybe a few test grades here and there and technically fall into a two, we just have to make parents aware of that so that we can all work together to make sure that the children make that three by the end of the school year. Um, in addition, it's a holistic multi-measure report. So it's not one thing that is gonna decide promotional criteria. Oh, my student do, didn't, my child didn't do well in the New York State Assessment. That doesn't determine promotion. It's looking at all the pieces together as well as the amount of progress the child has made that year that determines that at the end of the school year. So it's a conversation, but we're, we're legally responsible for making sure that you know. Um, so brevemente, um, nosotros tenemos que mandar esta notificación porque es un mandato um, del, est uh, de, del Estado. Tenemos que informar todos los padres antes del 15 de febrero. So by February 15th, that notification has to be made. We always try to do it as soon as possible to give us as much time as possible. So siempre tratamos de darle la información los, lo más ante posible para que tenemos la, el más tiempo posible para um, tener una, bueno, una meta y un plan para el niño, ¿verdad? Para que pueden lograr sus, um, sus metas. Uh, teachers will be scheduling meetings if a child received a promotion and doubt letter, really having a conversation. This is what we're currently doing to support your child in meeting their goals. So los maestros um, tendrán una cita y explicarán qué estamos haciendo para que el niño sí logra sus metas al final del año. Okay, and um, as I was mentioning, it is a multiple measure process and it all is determined by what the grading policy is. Um, I had some parents who were under the impression that we just like all of a sudden changed grading policies. We have not. This has been the same grading policy all year long. This is the grading policy that was shared with parents at each of the parent-teacher conferences in September, the opening conference, and was reviewed. So we've never done that. We would never do that. That would be unfair and poor practice. Um, and this, in fact, is not only the same grading policy for this school year, but it is the same grading policy as last school year as well. Um, this grading policy is in full alignment with state mandates. And I know that because I happen to work with the borough central office and the APA just to make sure that it got looked over and that everything was in full compliance. Um, so it's equitable and it tells parents whether you get a, um, a piece of work back that says two on it, or you get something that says 75 on it. Um, you know, what does that mean? Where does that fall in terms of whether or not my child passed or failed? So if we look at this, a passing score starts at a 65%. 64%, it, um, 64 to 56% is a level two, which approaches the standard, but is not a passing grade. And I think that's where a lot of us kind of get caught sometimes because it's like, oh, they're doing good work. They're almost there, but they're not quite there just yet, right? So we have a little bit more work to do and that's okay. And if they're far, far below, well, we have work to do. We identify what that is and we do that work. So si ven el, um, la policía, la, la polita, policía, policía de metas, um, un nivel tres comienza en un porcentaje de 65 Algo menos de 65 no, uh, es calificado con, como no pasar. So, nosotros usamos esto. So, si el niño trae un examen y tiene un porcentaje, si trae un, una asignación y tiene un nivel, um, todo eso se, se ajunta y así determinamos en, a dónde está el niño 
agregado con todas las designaciones y, y exámenes. I have a question. So. In, so are we like end of the year, June promotion criteria? So we would look at the body of the student's work across the year, how much progress was made, uh, where is it that they're struggling? Are those gaps something that will not detrimentally affect them if they want, went on to the next grade? Like, did they make enough progress this year that if they pass but aren't quite there yet, they could still kind of catch up? Or are they so far back that this is really going to be a hindrance? Yeah. Yes. So students that were like, wow, we're really not sure yet, they then get an extra opportunity over the summer. Um, also, what happens in June is that we administer something called a promotional portfolio, and that's like another support or help that can help pass the student along, right? But they can be held over in fifth grade. It does not typically happen. By typically, we we would have that parent would already have known by December that there are major, major concerns and we're really not sure, especially in the fifth grade, because that's, now you have to think about social and emotional well-being too. So if you didn't get that conversation by now, I would say, or any parent really hasn't had that conversation, I would say, be confident, be secure, let's continue to push them, but we know they're gonna make it. Saturday, Karim, yeah. New York State test. Parents always have the option. I mean, we've had the two meetings. Yeah, on the on the ELA and on the math assessment, parents always have the option to opt out of the state exam. Okay. Because that doesn't have anything to do with No, New York State assessment is no longer. A, a criteria for being held over. At one point, it did. Oh, that's a great question, Ms. Nunez. So the reason why you get the letter now is because it has to be entered into ATS, which is one of like the DOE central systems. And the window for that to be entered is the end of January. So the earliest that you could print out a promotion in doubt letter, I believe was like January 30th. So it's... Uh, you know, it has to do with systems in the Department of Education. However, many parents that I know we've spoken to so far have been in conversation with the teachers leading up to that point. Like it wasn't, for many of them, it wasn't a major shock. Sometimes receiving that letter though is like, oh, I don't know, it feels more official than the ongoing conversations that the teachers have been having about where the child's strength is and like what their areas of focus should be. But yeah, that's a total system thing. Yes, parent engagement time. Yeah. Like, how would you know that they have that in the future? I'm not going to go into the future, yeah. but I'm, just, mm -hmm. I'm glad to be able to make a leap to act. Yeah. Of course. Um, I'm so I think it's yeah. a reoccurring question that mm -hmm. comes up pretty frequently. I think when we have different meetings, it comes up. Um, Ms. Perez, mm -hmm. can you please tell her to talk closer uh, to a microphone? So we can't hear. <laughs> sorry, I moved away. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you. I apologize. Uh, the question was about uh, the time frame, the parent engagement. So I'm I'm sharing that uh, at least my personal experience, and I know other parents that I've talked to uh, during uh, parent teacher conference as well as um, Tuesday parent engagement. 
in case everybody doesn't know, on Tuesday, there's prior engagement, you can talk to your teachers. Um, just the question about how that is generally like communicated and how folks become aware of that. And I was saying that at different meetings, um, it does come up and it's brought up. Um, so perhaps there is an opportunity to announce it more formally. Even the teachers have said it or shared it. Um, and oftentimes, maybe you'll find that when they schedule those calls with you, it'll probably be on a Tuesday, um, specifically because that's when um, there's like designated time, but many of them are flexible and will have conversations whenever. Um, that's just like a des like a formal designated yeah. time for that, uh, for schools. Um, but in my experience here, I have two children in the school. There hasn't been any conversations that I've, I, I have never reached out to a teacher and they haven't made themselves available or worked around like my schedule, even if it was inconvenient for them. Um, I think if we're actively like seeking out the information and wanting to understand, they're super receptive of that. Um, so um, even with the letters going out and things like that, like it, it is scary, but there's ample opportunity prior to even with like the Saturday Academy happening, um, some of those conversations were happening prior of like, it's extra help. So even without having that letter, um, you kind of knew ahead of time that like the teacher recommended the child to um, participate. And if they didn't, that may just mean that your child um, is maybe at great standards and maybe they wouldn't necessarily need it, but I don't want to speak out of place for that, so. But that is a fair, fair yeah. question. And maybe uh, the opportunity there is to make it more widely known. And that's kind of, I was yeah. going to say, I think we could send out a weekly email blast. Um, Ms. Rivera, flyer, just reminding people that parent engagement 2.30 to 3 is available every Tuesday. And we can do virtual sessions. We can do in-person. We can do phone conferences, whatever is most convenient for, for the parent. Um, si había una pregunta um, sobre cómo yo como un padre sé que um, hay este tiempo para padres semanal. So yo dije que vamos a pedir que uh, la señora Rivera, la coordinadora de padres, mande un folleto semanal uh, recordando a padres que cada martes entre las dos y media y tres hay ese tiempo. Si acaso se queden, quieren reunir con la maestra, maestro, um, se puede hacer. Podemos hacer una sesión virtual, uh, por teléfono, en persona, como más le conviene um, a ustedes. Ahí, Ms. Bishop, I guess. Oh, I understand. Okay, I understand. If you just have me, put a note on the month of the calendar, because then it's just like a reminder. That calendar can look on my trade when I get it. And then it's just like always there, and it's not like another email where it's like, oh, wait. We could even put it into like the Tuesday boxes okay. so that it's not a footnote so tiny. To highlight, that's a great idea. I really like that. So we got really negative feedback about robocalls. She, um, Miss Maria asked, "Why don't we do the robocalls anymore?" I'm mean, sorry, Miss Maria. Um, why don't we do the robocalls anymore? Because in previous years, we used to have like the robocall system that would call parents and give them like a voice message, but. When we did the parent surveys last year in school ones, we got very negative feedback about robocalls. Parents found them intrusive, inconvenient. They picked up in the middle of, of a phone call, alarms because why is the school calling me? So yeah, we, yeah, the preferred, yeah. So the preferred method of communication was email, letters, and text. Um, messages. So, mm -hmm. oh, sure. Um, absolutely, we can have Ms. Rivera um, send that out. Uh, some teachers I know have put it on their Google Classroom, but most certainly um, we can have her do that as an email blast because it's a PDF. Yeah. That's for the dance. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was the dance part. Uh, we could also put it up on the school website absolutely i'll have miss out should do that tomorrow um and that was just to show that it was the same one as the one last year that went home okay and then my last slide was just to show the one revision that oops, i'm so sorry i don't know what i did here <laughs> The only revision that was made was 
prior to the pandemic, 2019, 2020, uh, was this white grading policy. Uh, and it was not in compliance with New York State mandates and requirements. Um, and you can, it's pretty glaring, right? A level, um, a child was given a level two up to almost 80%. So if you scored a 79%, you were failing. Um, that is not in compliance with state requirements, right? Mm -hmm. So I came, I changed it. I made sure that we were in compliance with state regulations. Um, and the state has said, set the grading policy to have a passing score of 65 or above. So our breakdown matches um, what the state requires. And that's more equitable, more of our children are passing um, in accordance with state regulation. So lo, lo último que iba a presentar era la diferencia um, entre el 2019 y 20, cuando la póliza de metas uh, no estaba en uh, coordinación con, el, con los requisitos del Estado. Um, pueden ver que un niño en nivel 2 estaba ahí hasta 79% y eso es no pasar. Y entonces yo lo cambié cuando llegué en el 2021-22 y ahora el, eh, el puntuaje de pasar es 65. O sea, es, es más, um, how do you say fair? Equitable in English, but... Fair, yeah. Razonable. Mm -hmm. Exacto. Más razonable. Gracias, Ana. So that is it for my portion. If anyone has any questions, I'm more than happy to answer anything, but I don't see um, the chat anymore. Sorry, it's like the chat. Anyone here have questions? And if you do have questions and think of them later, you know, you, we're always available. Feel free to reach out. We're always here. Si tienen alguna pre pregunta más tarde, siempre estamos aquí y no solamente nos tenemos que dejar saber. And I have interrupted the recording by mistake, but that's, that's okay. Any questions? I think that was it. Reminders, we talked about all of these things. Fri uh, dance party, the 16th, Title I meeting, super important. Friday, 17th. That's in person and on Zoom. In person and in Zoom. At 245. 2.45. The fundraising committee uh, meeting is the 28th at 6, at 6 p.m. That's where we talk about how we use the coins, the funds. Uh, there's no school midwinter recess from the 20th to the 24th. Uh, los recordatorios, el baile el 16, la reunión de título 1 por Zoom y en persona a la 2.45 la reunión del comité de fundraising uh, el 28 de febrero por Zoom uh, y no hay clase del 20 de febrero al 24. El oh, one more thing. Next week is Spirit no. Week. Oh, yes. It's, From uh, Valley. <laughs> uh, that went out. That definitely went out. The beautiful yes. uh, flyer that has a theme every day. Respect for all week. La semana de respeto para todo. Ese folleto se envió a la casa. Es azul. Tiene diferente cuadrito y todo. Cada día hay un tema diferente. Um, different theme every day. Next week. That should be fun. Our office hours. Thank you. We love all of you. Thank you for sticking it out. Every meeting, our goal is to do it in an hour. We have not successfully achieved that to date, but all in the spirit of getting all the information out to y'all. So um, thank you to everybody who is still with us, both virtually and in person. So let us see. Well, this is triple our in-person attendance, by the way. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, it that was it. fun every time. So okay. let us see your faces, the IRL. <laughs> All righty. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Buenas noches. Gracias a todos.